fans, welcome to Tampa, Florida, the beautiful a la carte pavilion. Tonight, it's RFC 31, New Breed. We're here to guarantee you an exciting championship fight night from the longest running pro MMA event in the entire Southeast. We're gonna have the 69 Slam Girls from Australia. Prince Fielder from Major League Baseball. The legend himself, Shaquille O'Neal, will be in the house. We have fans coming from everywhere to watch this event tonight. And Nick, it's just because they keep setting the standard higher and higher. You do not want to miss this great event. Come see our celebrity friends and come see some knockouts and submissions from the very best. It's professional fight night. RFC 31 New Breed starts now. Coming up next, it's Matt Ferriolo and Tony Leone. Both of these guys share a lot of championship belts in the amateur ranks. Tonight, they make their 155-pound debut in the pros. Nick, tell us about it. Well, these guys both made their name in the amateur ranks, like you said. Very exciting fighters, both belt holders, amazing guys looking looking to be good in the in the pros. And I think I think this might be fight of the night. It absolutely could be. They're throwing the amateur belts to the wind and starting their pro career right now. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Fight fans, RFC 31. It's Leone and Ferriola. And man, this has the potential for fireworks. These guys have cardio, they have skills, they're wrestlers, they both come from incredible camps. If you can't tell by the tone of my voice, I'm fired up for this fight. Yeah, Benny, these guys uh, really top of the food chain as far as cardio goes. There's going to be no, no quit in either one of them. You know that. Uh, they come out, they touch gloves, they immediately start banging. Uh, Tony Leone, the one in the red shorts there, I've seen him before. He is all over the cage. He'll, he'll jump over the cage if he has to to win this fight. Yeah, these guys have been in fights where they've been bloody. These guys have been in fights where they've been over super fast. These guys have gone the distance, and they never get tired, either one of these guys. They train, train, train. They're wrestlers. They're both wrestlers that are turning that wrestling game into very, very good mixed martial arts. They have storied amateur careers. In fact, I think it's both of their debut, if, if I'm not mistaken. And this is the absolute kind of fight that if you're a real fighter, this is what you want in your very first professional fight. Absolutely. I think win, lose, or draw, every, you know, the big winner is going to be the fans. You know that. And I think both of them are going to leave it all in the cage, regardless of how it goes. What we what we saw was a really nice takedown from Matt Furiola. He put Tony Leone on his back. You can tell he's the smaller fighter. But as you can see, he looks very, very calm. He, he's sitting. He's relaxed. He's locking up when he needs to lock up. He's controlling where he needs to control. He's not absorbing any real damage or punishment from Matt Furiola. Matt Furiola going for a, a, a knee slide pass there. He's going to... If he can get his knee out there, he can pass to side control and get a more dominant position. Tony Leone just locks it right back up into a full guard. What I really like about fighters like these guys is that they're fast and they're very technical. They're good at what they do, but they have a lot of power with that. A lot of times you see a guy who's a powerful guy, but not a lot of grappling finesse. Or the guy that's got great grappling finesse, but just not a lot of power and strength. Both of these guys, for this weight class, possess amazing power and finesse in their ground game. So you're going to see this non-stop aggressive tendency, non-stop ground and pound, and nothing but just try to finish a fight as fast as you can. What I love about it is that they're not going to probably finish a fight right away. These guys are going to stalemate each other. They're going to try to gas each other out. As you can see, Leone's having a hard time getting Fiorio. Ferriola out of his guard, and I may just start saying Matt for the rest of the night. I tell you what, that's a crazy hard last name. But Matt climbing up on top, taking advantage of his position, and this is something that I was going to say that Leone's not used to having people crawl all over him like that, but what a great escape. Now he's in the guard of Ferriola, and let's see how it turns out this way. Yeah, he did a real nice job of timing that, uh, that mount attempt by Matt Ferriola. Uh, and he timed it so he could bridge and roll right into the guard of Matt Furiola. So let's see what kind of damage he can bring. Matt Furiola, for his, he's doing a little hat kick to, the, to Tony Leone's thighs there. I like that action. That's, uh, that's what you always want to see, a very active guard fighter. That, 
and what I was going to mention before is uh, Tony Oni is was was del delivering some very nice elbows from the bottom. What <laughs> Matt Ferrioli went for a triangle choke, and Tony Leone picked him up and slammed him a la Rampage. That's uh, say he was doing the, the body kicks like hoist gracie would do from the guard and now now you're seeing guillotine setups you're seeing leg attacks look at this scramble right here side control now for leone in the red shorts but the slam defense from a triangle choke is usually nine out of ten times a very very bad thing to do man that was that was perfect execution in that case for for leone but a nice setup what a great attack of that triangle for ferriola and now ferriola's in trouble on his back yeah, in fact, more trouble. Tony Leone went for an ill-advised mount attempt right there, and, and Furiola is going to utilize that to get back to butterfly guard, maybe even get a stand-up out of this. Yeah. Or even roll over the top. I didn't see that coming, but uh, Furiola rolling over to a more dominant position. He's trying to tie Tony Leone's legs down so that he can start bringing some pain. Yeah, that was a beautiful sweep, and now he's got open half guard on the top side. This is where a lot of damage can start being done on behalf of Ferriola. And now Leone's not only trying to escape, but he's got to protect and defend. And a lot of times in a fight, you have to give up a bad position for an even worse position just to scramble. And I think Leone was trying to do that, but now he's paying the price for it. He absolutely is. Matt Fioriola is on his back, and Matt Fioriola is a beast. Look at this guy. He's very, very powerfully built, and, uh, you know, you, you can tell his grappling is, is the high level. Tony Leone is mounted and then taking some punishment. Tony Leone keeps scrambling. He gets out. He's going to go to Fioriola's hips. He's going to try and get a takedown of his own. Fioriola's got that front headlock. If he goes down, well, it looks like Tony Leone is going to let it off. If you follow Facebook and you see Fioriola on there, you might want to like him because his training that he posts, how he trains is absolutely insane. As we finish round one, this fight has been absolutely insane. We'll be right back with round number two. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. You're watching XPTV Sports. Here we go. It's round two. Fariola and Leone. This is, as they used to say, a barn burner. We've seen position changes. We've seen ground and pound. We've seen submission attempts. We've seen some excellent kickboxing. In round number one, we saw everything an MMA fan would want out of a fight. And these guys are new in the professional ranks. That's even more impressive. Yeah, Benny, you know, it's, it's always impressive when a fighter can keep it in exactly the range he wants. But for the fan, I think you got to love the scrambles. When you get into, you get uh, guys changing positions constantly, going for different takedowns, looking for different things, that makes it more interesting. You know, if you're really, really good, you can. You can keep it in the clinch, or you can keep it on the ground, or you can even keep it standing. But, you know, the, the position changes are key for entertainment value. I think what we did not see towards the end of round number one, a small cut has started on the left eyebrow of Ferriola. He's got a lot of Vaseline up there. It could just be uh, a second wipe down, but it could be that uh, his coach, my buddy Aaron Conway Coringa, you know, was just uh, trying to keep it offset. But if, if he's cutting the eyebrow, we know how much that area can bleed. So we'll have to see what happens um, as the fight progresses, if there's any more damage. But regardless, neither one of these guys are showing any real signs of abuse, even though they're providing so much action and attack against each other. Yeah, you know what I think it was, Benny, at the end of round number one, Tony Leone went for the high kick, and it looked like it might have just clipped very, very slightly the eyebrow of Matt Fiorella. I don't think it was it rocked him or anything like that, but it could have been enough just to cut, like, cause a cut. Yeah, he's not bleeding like profusely or anything right now. It's not to say that something's not opened up, but even if it just started out and made it a sensitive area, if he hits that spot again, it'll make it open up that much easier. But we don't see any blood at the moment. All we see is two young guys trying to get after it. And look at this battle of strength and technique like we talked about. Trying to get that guard pass. But Ferriola is doing an amazing job to shut it down. And I love the fact that Leone is, even though his arms are tied up, he's trying to utilize leg strength and hip movement to get past. Yeah, he's doing a real nice job going for those uh, positions. And he's not really giving up too much by, by going for them. What he's doing is forcing Furiola to try and keep his guard intact. And that's keeping Furiola on his back, which is going to allow Tony Leone to land some of those punches, which you just saw. Now, Furiola knows that he cannot stay here. He needs need to submit or get up. And it looks like Tony Leone is going to let him out, let him up if he, uh, if he stays outside too long. Uh, Furiola is just going to pop right back to his feet, which he does right here. 
Back to the standing range, Vinny. Yeah, Ferriola did an awesome job at doing the hip escape and trying to go to butterfly guard, which gave him that ability to either slide back in or step out. And Leone eventually said, okay, I'll let you step out. Now look at these guys on their feet just trading punch for punch back and forth. Leone under the cross of Ferriola, and that was a great shot and a great step. I mean, these guys are trading everything, and another beautiful submission attempt by Ferriola loses the loses the head but stays in side control and this thing as the fight's getting on they're getting faster and stronger they're not slowing down at all they're actually improving the pace yeah this is what we warned you guys about about these two particular fighters they start to get stronger and stronger as the fight goes on you'd think you'd get gassed you'd get tired uh, not not these two they start start winding up i hit you okay you hit me. I sweep you, you sweep me. I mean, these guys are trading in every sense of the way. Full respect. A lot of open half guard again here. Ferriola does not want to pass that open half guard. He likes his position. Shoulder pressure, head pressure on the jaw of Leone while he's working those body shots. Both, that's a great way to show topside dominant control. And every punch he gets, the judges see that. And he's scoring points for himself. So even though he's not taking a lot of damage from Ferriola, Leone is losing the battle at this point as far as the judge's perspective. Yeah, what he's going to want to do, you see where his right hand is, he, or right arm rather, he's trying to kind of overhook that head. What he really wants to do is underhook Ferriola's left arm. If he can do that, he can start to turn his way out of being in this half guard position. But he's doing so, a, lot, a little too much defending right there and not as much uh, position advancing for himself. Look at Ferriola right now, staying on top, not trying to pass that open half guard, but he's turning Leone so that he can put his head uncomfortably up against that cage wall. With 45 seconds left in this round, Ferriola is in, he's in the driver's seat. Yeah, right now, Ferriola is in the driver's seat. He's keeping Tony Leone on his back, and by doing so, he's going to create, uh, in the judge's mind, at least a winning position. Even though Tony Leone is active and he is landing strikes of his own, it's just not as dominant. Without doing a wall walk and standing up, this is probably, at the same time, you know, one of the safer places for Leone to be. Might be losing to the judges, but he's not taking a lot of damage. But he's got to set up a sweep, or he's got to create the scramble because he can't continue to stay here. As our referee, John Hosgood, comes in to separate these guys now with 10 seconds left in this round, they get a fresh stand-up, and it just wasn't busy enough. Let's see how this thing ends. Heavy hands by both guys. Ferriola going back. Round two, done. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Third and final round, RFC 31. Welcome to XPTV Sports. I'm your host, Benjamin Glossop, with Nick Alexander. And Nick, this has been an incredible fight. Two young guys, two gladiators, trading just about everything you can trade in an MMA fight. And I got to give a nod to Ferriola just based on control and punching. But Nick, this has just been an execution of awesomeness as far as this fight goes. Uh, the execution of awesomeness. That is what we are going to call this fight because <laughs> you are the greatest host in the world, Vinny. And uh, <laughs> and uh, you called it perfectly. An entertaining fight. The fans are electrified. We are electrified. This is what you want. It's a sellout crowd. It's great matchmaking. Now we've been seeing Leone go for the takedown. Ferriola's been stuffing it. Now Ferriola's going for the takedown. And Leone's big elbows. Those are going to do damage. That could be something that would open these guys up. Brutal elbows, heavy hands, and that was really good punching defense against that takedown. Yeah, you know, that elbow was vicious, Benny. I think I got sprayed with blood on that one. I, these guys are going to start showing some wear and tear. No matter what kind of shape you're in, no matter how good of a fighter you are, when you fight at this pace and this intensity for two full rounds and you're working into a third set of five minutes, you're going to start taking damage. And I think that we do have Ferriola is starting to show some signs of blood coming down. I don't know quite how bad it is yet, but if it's on the forehead or anywhere in the hairline, we know how easy that part of the body bleeds and how fast it pours out. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And you, you can see it on his face. He is starting to bleed, but he is in the more dominant position now. you got Furiola who tran transitioned to a mount and now is transitioning to uh, Tony Leone's back, who, where he can, if he can control this, he's probably going to grind out the victory. Yeah, I mean, he's got a great opportunity here for setting up rear naked chokes, arm control, a lot of ground and pound right now. He's just controlling the position, working for ground and pound. Leone, not end of the fight trouble, but he's in a lot of trouble here. This is 
not a place you can be. It's not damage and strikes you can afford to take when a fight's this close. And right now, Fariola is in the driver's seat. Yeah, you know, Tony Leone has got a real, real uh, a keen ability to scramble. You know, you, you and I have just seen it. He scrambles into a, into a good, uh, you know, guard position or whatever. But what he isn't doing is escaping properly. And if he could actually start escaping properly, he wouldn't have to scramble as hard. Yeah, I mean, right now we need to see him doing the UPA, using his hips to move his hips. There's a little bit of a hip pump, not just trying to push him away with his arm strength. Right now, strength cannot be the factor. You need to preserve as much strength as you can in this level of the fight because that's going to be, you know, your saving grace towards the very end. It's got to be about technique and position. And right now, Ferriola is doing a great job riding the hips from this mount, a low mount to shut those hips down to prevent that hip escaping right here by Leone. And so this is great control by Ferriola as he continues to do damage and punch and go. But I think we're starting to get a little bit of a leg through. Leone did a great job using the cage. Use your tools around you in a fight. That was excellent. And a big knee by Leone as Ferriola shoots back in. That was more damage. This fight is turned on a dime. Leone is now in control. And another beautiful, two beautiful knees. Ferriola could be in big trouble. He cannot take this for granted. He has taken some serious damage. Those elbows are vicious there, landing flush. Tony, Tony Leone has some nasty elbows. Matt Ferriola is cut everywhere. Yeah, that opened him up in two or three different places. He's got a cut on the forehead. He's got a cut. You can see it right there, a nasty gash in the hairline. Blood is everywhere, and Leone is like a shark in the ocean. Smells the blood and is attacking fiercely. Keeps trying to hit the same spot, open it up more. At the very least, with a minute and a half left in this fight, stop it to bleeding. You know, whatever it takes. Leone has done some absolute bloody damage here, but is it enough because Ferriola has been in control the majority of the fight? You know, he has been in control the majority of the fight. The cleaner strikes have landed from Leone, obviously, but but control plays a huge factor in these judges' minds, and he's still landing elbows. Benny, these elbows are just nasty. He's going to end up breaking his elbow on Leone's head. It's not to say that Ferriola has not had good strikes. He has landed plenty of his own very exceptional strikes, very, very good position, great control, but Leone made Ferriola bleed, so, you know, Dramatic-wise, Leone's in the lead. Quality of strikes, the number of strikes landed versus precision control, I still have to give the nod to Ferriola. But with 39 seconds left in this fight, I tell you what, Nick, it's anybody's game at this moment. Yeah, we're going to come down to the wire. It's probably going to go to the judge's decision here at this point unless the referee uh, says he's seen enough of, as far as the blood goes uh, and has uh, the doctor stop it. But that would, be a, that would be a miscarriage of justice in my mind. Could you imagine if the, if we would have had a stoppage to let the referee look at it? It's possible with that much blood. Let's take a look at all these cuts. But our referee said, no, we're fighting on. You can see you're moving fine. There's 10 seconds left. And, well, we're getting another stand-up. Ferriola's rubbing his head and taking a look. And he's saying, hey, what's going on with three seconds left? We're at the end of this bloody match. Boom. Fight is done. What a great fight. Incredible endurance. These guys battled. This was an incredible opportunity for Ferriola and for Leone to showcase their skills and give us a chance. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We go to the scorecards. Judge Daniel Torres scores the bout. 29-28, Leone. <laughs> Judge Barry Luxemburg scores them out. 29-28, Ferriolo. <laughs> Judge Don Bellis scores them out. 29-28, for the winner by split decision, Matt. I think we need to thank the RFC for putting that fight together. That was a war. Matt, what an incredible debut. Um, just the same as earlier, that, that passion, that energy, all these stitches you're going to need, you just earned a three-fight contract if you'll take it with the RFC. How do you feel right now? Definitely, I feel good. It was one of the greatest fights I've ever had. Thanks to Tony, the crowd, everybody that came up here and supported us. 
It was awesome. You guys traded almost every punch for punch, every position for position, takedowns, sprawls. I mean, that was completely and totally back and forth. What was it that gave you the edge? Uh, just my coaches li listen in my coaches' corner and they just tell me, keep pressuring them, keep pressuring them, take them down. It's your game. And I believe in my coaches. I believe in the jungle. You know, we're, we're the best team out there. Well, we believe you deserve that three fight contract. Congratulations, Matt Ferriolo, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Man, RFC 31 is bringing the heat. That fight right there, so far, is fight of the night. So crazy of a war. You got splattered with blood cage side. Yeah, man, all of us. There were like four of us cage side that got just smashed with blood. What a war that turned out to be. Unbelievable fight. I, I, I you know, you could say that Tony Leone definitely, lo he, I mean, he lost the fight, but the bit, the amount of damage that he imposed upon Matt Ferriola, that guy's got to go to the hospital and get stitches right now. Yeah, both of those guys are banged up. They both could barely walk out of the cage, and that's exactly what we love here at the RFC. Excellent matchmaking, two great athletes, tremendous. Another spectacular RFC event. We can't wait for the next one. On behalf of XPTV Sports and the RFC, I'm Benjamin Glossop alongside Nick Alexander. We'll see you at the next one. Your victor, Matt. And Matt, we are here also with the XP TV Sports 69 Slam Girls who want to know what a bloody battle. How did you come out of it looking so happy and so victorious? Well, I got the W, you know, and uh, I fought a very tough opponent. And um, I felt like I controlled most of the time. You know, I, I didn't do the, the things I wanted to do, but I got the W, so I can't be too unhappy. Well, I was sitting ringside, and I heard your corner, and they were very, very um, supportive of everything that you were doing in the...